Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Fanside on RaceCanada.world. Cam K here. I'm with Great and Bun, and we have a Pinty. Now, DJ didn't like this, but we're going to call, because he didn't like being called a legend, <laughs> but I'm calling Scott Steckley a Pinty Series legend, four-time champion. He is on the show. Scott, thank you so much. We are so excited to have you. Oh, no problem at all. I'm glad to be on the show. It's uh, it's a pretty exciting thing you guys got going on now, so I'm proud to be part of it. Thank you very much. We're going to let Graydon Bun, uh, probably the biggest supporter of 22 Racing in the world, uh, lead us off with the first question. Yeah, as we had said earlier with the boys, I mean, this is probably the the longest time in the last five or six years that we haven't seen uh, you guys in person at the track. But uh, you guys got to do a, a bit of running this year. And uh, um, I I want to come right out of the box and ask, you got J.R. Fitzpatrick. Uh, um, and comp- with your oval program, uh, how are how are things going because it sure it sure seems like you had some good shakedowns on the ovals this year yeah we did it would have been nice you know to have a full season um obviously mm-hmm. we had a lot of plans going into this year on um, you know a lot of testing stuff like that to try to get our oval program better um it, it's so hard when you we brought jr in this year for a few races there and it's his driving style is so much different than than uh mark's or especially alex's so it was a uh, it was kind of a learning curve. We tested a couple times with Jr. and we thought we were really good, but um, it, it's a tough series, as as everyone will tell you. It's, you gotta you gotta know what changes to make with that driver for that the track conditions, and um, you know it, it's tough. We're just hoping that next year can be a full season, and and uh, yeah. we're still you know Mark and Alex and maybe Jr. will be on board, or who knows for sure what's gonna happen yet, but. You know, we're working hard to win races. Must have been a um, a big deal for you guys to get PartyCasino.fun and probably the most beautiful car I have seen in years. Yeah. That th- And I I mean, Graydon and I were killing ourselves that we weren't able to see, see that under the lights. Riley oh, in particular. What a beautiful car. What a beautiful car. How did that thing come together? And we got to talk about the guy who does your uh, paint schemes for the for the team. Uh, well, Dennis, well, Jr. and, and uh, his group put together a sponsorship deal with with another gentleman that I work with quite a bit. But um, yeah, it turned out great. They they did a big deal with TSN with commercials, and it was part of a TV deal and a race car deal. And and uh, Jr. was kind of the perfect fit for it with Flambro and Vicasa. He's you know, he runs really well at them two tracks. And uh, basically, basically, uh, Dennis Thompson, I guess, came up with the paint scheme. And, and Party Casino, obviously, um, did their tweaks to it and, you know, said things they, they wanted changed and stuff like that. But but it was Dennis that, that came up with that one. Uh, Jerry Hall also does a lot of car designs for our team. Um, just... This scenario it wasn't with Jerry, but Jerry does great work. Uh, Jerry does a lot of stuff for 22 Racing. He helps my son Kyle out a lot. Um, he's a great designer. So we have, you know, there's so, like we said earlier, there's so many great people that that you need to make this all work. So um, you just got to thank everyone. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you as you described earlier uh, with the boys, uh, you kind of just started with some buddies and uh, and, and built a race car, and, and and you were the guy that set the bar high and won the first time out, uh, and things just kind of took off from there. Uh, you've always had AW mill rights on the car, um, and, and Herb Transport such a big part of your program. Um, kind of talk about how that, like you had to acquire sponsorship as you went. So um, I just want to hear more about that. Yeah, we, we built, we built the car that first year. That was 1992. Um, obviously I'm from a small town, Milverton with 1500 people. AW Mill rights had just started their business a couple of years prior. And there was two gentlemen that owned it. Um, Arnie and Warren. And uh, Arnie was a big baseball fan. So he sponsored a lot of baseball stuff and, 
and Warren seen this race car, so right away he wanted to get involved. So in, in 1993, he started sponsoring the car, and, and uh, I still see him about once a week. He comes to my shop every day and for a visit or whatever, and uh, he's a great guy. They've, they've sponsored me since 1993. Um, Herb Transport came on board a couple years later, but, uh, not you know, not too much later, but um, they're a great company, and, and they still sponsor sponsors to this day we we have their nice trucks to use all the time and uh um, internationals you know yeah, yeah. It, like <laughs> i said you can't do it without great sponsors you know yeah I, you know a lot of times i don't know if aw gets much out of it anymore or anything like that or herbs but they still do it because they love it and they mm -hmm. they like to be involved and and um it's just great people yeah, as you said, it's the people and the relationships, right? And yeah. and it's gone through the year, like you said, how long it's spanned uh, yeah. lots of history. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to speak to kind of, you know, you've you've been through the, the cast car movement where we had 50-odd cars, 40 cars showing up to the racetrack, you know, sponsors on a lot of them. And say the Penny Series, you know, we, we have where we're at right now, you know, with medians around 14 to 15 cars depending on the year, depending on the track. Would you say that the climate for finding sponsorship is harder in 2020 than it was back then? Or is it finding the correct sponsor? Or is it just um, a situation of being in Canada that maybe racing isn't thought of as, you know, important as much as, say, hockey? Yeah. I, I think it's it's a lot harder to get a sponsor now than it was, you know, back then. Um just like the automotive companies, like a lot of back then, a lot of them each had their own car, like Wagner brakes, um, a, a, Monroe shocks, a lot of them companies where now they've all joined and they're all one big company. So, you know, that's taken a lot of that away. Um, and like you said, I don't know if racing is seen as high in Canada as it is in the U S and, and just with, all businesses being tighter for money it's just it's definitely made it harder to get sponsorship and and the pinty series is so expensive to race in um it, it's not that it's a you know it's a great series it's just it's expensive it's the top level in canada and it, it costs a lot of money to do it and and sponsors every year are getting harder and harder to find but i think what nascar has in store is you know they're i think they're going to try to get back to more oval racing or not necessarily more oval racing, but more in Ontario, um, try to get maybe some of that grassroots racing back. And I think that that is going to pick up the car counts with, you know, with the way it was maybe not the way it was years ago with 50 cars, but I feel in the next few years, I think they're going to be able to get the car counts back up a bit. Well, that's news to my, I love that. That's great news. <laughs> Well, as you said, it's uh, everything's just related to uh, the way businesses evolve and and the way our our society is now, where it's all big conglomerates that uh, um, it's less, uh, for lack of a better term, mom and pop or smaller scale. Where um, uh, I don't know, even back in the day, they found money to to put a race car together, but as you said, it's just the uh, the inherent expense of of going racing. Um, uh, Canadian Tire came on board, or and tow truck in a box, um, that kind of helped you break out, right? Um, that's yeah. got to be a huge infusion to uh, to the race program. Yeah, it was. You know, we we struggled for a lot of years. Our first year in the Super Series, we only did like six races, and then maybe the next year we did eight races, and finally we got the where we had enough uh, equipment built up. Like we just had to slowly build our equipment up. Um, and we got it built up that we had enough to run the full seasons. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then it took some years, you know, to get competitive and win. And finally in 2006, I believe we got our first win in NASCAR and then in seven NASCAR bought it. I believe 2007 and we got a win then. And then 2008, uh, we we're struggling again for sponsorship, but we got a bunch of wins in 2008. And then that's when Canadian Tire came on board. Four wins. Yeah. 2008 <laughs> and then Canadian Tire came on board you know it was it all worked out perfect we just we had all our equipment built up and we were finally competitive and winning races and and then they came on board and then that just allowed us to keep on rolling 
I mean, us sitting here right now, like it looks, it looks pretty great on your part. I mean, you, like, as you said, how it all started from the roots of it, how it slowly just built up and you just kind of built your fleet up and your schedule up, uh, out of necessity and ability as, as sponsors came on board and, and then you started racking up championships. Yeah, it, it was good. You know, it was once Canadian Tire came on board, we were rolling pretty good. And, you know, I think we could have kept winning some more races if, you know, sure. things would have played out. We were, you know, 2013, 14, 15, we were doing pretty good. The crew was all gelling really, really well. And mm-hmm. just everything was going good. But then uh, you need money to keep doing it. And, and yeah. I didn't have money to do it. So we just had to, you know, take a step back. But it's all good. Yeah, we don't need to talk about that part because we all know it, man. If if you're if you're able to keep going, there's there was no stopping what was going on. Those the <laughs> trophy on the hood picture, <laughs> the trophy on the hood pictures. I mean, those are some of my yeah. favorite things. When you guys win now, still, and you see it on yeah. Tags Car, or, um, that's that's awesome. I love it. Yeah. No, we had a lot of good times. That's for sure. Over the years, you you meet so many people and. So all the relationships that you have and, and uh, you have a lot of fun, that's for sure. Well, I don't know what, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to share the NASCAR Pinty series with the rest of the world because, you know, we really aren't known really that much. So I want to share kind of, I would like you to share hopefully uh, what the experience is like in the off season. Because we hear about down south, how it's, you know, they're working on their their equipment as soon as the 2020 season ends. They're going right ready for 2021. Our season is a lot shorter. It's a lot shorter, a lot less races. But what does the off season look like for a team like 22 Racing? Well, not in, not counting right now, but the past five years, um, as soon as the season was over, we, we took apart normally i'd say for the last you know five years we've had at least six cars in the shop if not seven or eight but basically likely three quarters of the cars get completely stripped the ones that you used all the time and uh the chassis get sandblasted and and repainted you fix everything up uh put new bodies on them uh basically you rebuild all the main cars you know if we we have backup cars that maybe only got used once or twice they'll stay just the way they were um, but the main cars would get completely gone through and rebuilt. Um, we normally would always build at least one car every winter. So that, you know, keeps you busy. So normally there, me and Tyler are in the shop, you know, all winter long. And we have a few other gentlemen that then come in in like March and work from March to September. So, but normally the off season, Tyler and I were kept pretty busy all, all, uh, off season. That kind of led me to my question, like, uh, how big of a company is it? Um, yeah, as you said, there's a, a, a seasonal element to it, but uh, it's just you and Tyler kind of through the, the, the winter months, and, and then you beef up, and then that's not counting road crew, of course, I guess, is it? Yeah. No, that, so me and Tyler, for since 2012, I guess, um, the last two years, there was another gentleman that was here full-time, Matt, he's on the 18 crew. Mm-hmm. But uh, for the last eight months or so, he's been over at my automotive shop. So mm-hmm. he, he hasn't been here. And then in the summer, uh, Greg Gibson, who's a crew chief on one of our cars a lot, he'll he'll come throughout the winter the odd time, you know, to do, he does a lot of fabrication work, welding and, and uh, TIG welding and stuff. So when we nice. need that done, I'll uh, pile a bunch of that up and he'll come for a week. But then he nor- would normally be here full time from... I would say April until the end of September. Right. So, you know, there's two to three all winter, but then four to five all summer, basically. Hmm. Nice. So, yeah. Well, Scott, you had tons of success in the NASCAR Pinty series. Well, on various tracks, but there was one I think that we wanted to see you get. Uh, that road, a pesky road win. You were really close uh, a couple of times, but uh, what, what do you think it w- was the reason behind that? Obviously, you had you had that real close race in 2015 um, uh, that uh, Gary Clute ended up winning, but uh, was it something that maybe road street courses just wasn't your forte, 
or um, are they really just that challenging to win? No, just I wasn't very good at them, I guess. That was amazing. <laughs> I, no, you know, and like, I don't know what year it was, but uh, at Three Rivers one year, I was leading the race for quite a ways, and a caution came out right at the end. And me and JR, I was leading, and caution came out, and nobody was going to catch me that race. And then uh, uh, JR and I wrecked with about two laps to go. And then maybe a year or two later in Edmonton, I was leading the race and nobody was going to catch me. And a uh, caution came out and then me and JR wrecked again. So, and then there's the CTMP, but um, I've got three rivers. I think I, I almost won it twice. Edmonton, I almost won it just the one time and then CTMP a few times. Toronto Indy, we've had a few seconds. Um, we can always, you know, run in the top two, three, four, it's just the wind was never there. We we obviously came very, very close and, and um, you know, maybe if we would have won one four or five years ago, we might have won, won some more, but um, it's just the way it goes, you know, you, you do your best, every, the whole team does great and just things go wrong, it seems, or, you know, I, we never got one given to us, that's for sure, and, and uh, <laughs> it was always they got taken away with yeah. one half to go. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say is you just you never had one given to you. And whenever you were in the hunt, you guys were like digging for it. I mean, it's just it was kind of like a like a Dale and Daytona 500 type scenario where like you're in the hunt repeatedly, but it just it mm-hmm. never, ever happens. I mean, in his that may be a bad example because it did happen in 98 <laughs> for him. But I just there's but, still like, you know time. What I mean? Yeah, There's still time. Well, you know what I mean, right? Like yeah. it's just everything has to be put together perfectly, and then for yeah. whatever reason, it just doesn't happen. And it's not for lack of effort or for lack of performance. It just whatever reason doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah, that's the way it goes, you know. And, and that's not you like not necessarily just for road courses. I mean, that's just yeah, like any marquee yeah. race or any race that you just yeah. want to have that on your belt. Sometimes it does and doesn't. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to. We were sitting here talking about it the other night that we never, Tuesday nights a whole crew gets together, or a bunch of crew guys come and we work in cars and stuff and then sit around at the end of the night and we were talking about that races that we've got given to us and, and we don't, we never got any races that we felt, you know, given to us where guys wrecked in front of us or anything like that. That was just, just the way it went where we could, we felt, you know, if we would have got one or two of them wins, we could have got some more, but, um, Still, all in all, it was we got lots of wins, so it's good. You guys always did your homework, and it seemed like when you did show up, like um, on the West Coast swings and stuff, or, or the Western swing, I should say, you don't go right to the coast, but uh, um, you guys would go out there and, and clean up and, and take the hardware. But, like, it's just, yeah, you guys always seem to do your homework, must have had some good notebooks and, and uh, just been in that that scenario before of putting a whole race together. I mean, yeah, you guys were bulletproof there going out and taking everybody's trophy. <laughs> yeah, going out west was a lot of fun. We always had, you know, we had great results out there, whether it was Ver- Vernon, we did really, really well at um, all, all the out west tracks. So, and same as OD. So just our whole oval program was, was really good. Um, yeah. Just, I, I know we did a lot of testing. We did a lot of oval track testing for, you know, to get, like I talked earlier, the, the driver needs to know what changes he wants to make in the car from practice to the race. And that's the biggest thing about our series because the track changes so much from the end of practice to race time. So you need, you need to know what adjustments you want to make to the car for, from practice to the race time. So when, you know, when you started in CASCAR, when you had, we ran through Casca, ran through the Canadian Tire portion of the series, now Pinty series. We've unfortunately, and we, we had to say goodbye to another track this year in St. Eustache. Um, you've seen a lot come and go. If there's a, an option that you had a magic, uh, you know, some sort of magic to bring a track back from obscurity, from the, the Casca or Pinty's or Canadian Tire series, which, which track are you bringing back? Well, for our series to go back to would be to Riverside and Anagina. That's by far my all-time favorite racetrack. <laughs> um, from from the dead, 
let's from, say one that what's no dead, longer. Um, Moss Portal was all good, but Saint Asaf, you know, everybody hates Saint Asaf, but we we did very, very well there. I think I won five races in the NASCAR series there. But Moss Ford Oval, it was fun. It was just, you know, it was a hard track to get around, but it, it was a lot of fun, Moss Ford Oval. I, I've seen you tear it up many times there. And more than once, it was unfortunately um, an engine that actually got yeah. torn up at the track, but it was still a very dominant car. Um, you've got connections, obviously, with some other drivers in the series as you're, you know, the team owner. Um, let's talk about the, the connections with Mark Antoine Cameron and Alex Tagliani and how those deals came together. Uh, basically, you know, just Alex, you know, gave me a phone call and, 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 and uh, wondered if I'd be interested in teaming up with them and putting a deal together and, and run them full time. And we worked out a deal and been together ever since it, you know, we, we've had good days and bad days. We, he won a bunch of ovals in 2016, I believe. Um, we haven't been since then, we haven't been able to get him back to victory lane and ovals, but, uh, road courses, you know, he's up front all the time when in Toronto Indy, mm -hmm. GP three R or he did win GP three R two years ago. Um, see Kim P he finally won. It took him a few years to win it, but he did. So, you know, it, it's been good and uh, sort of the same type of deal with Mark. We were at CTMP one May weekend and, and he was there just walking around and, and we got talking and he told me he had a sponsor that was maybe looking to get into it. So we uh, we did a deal for three or four road races that year yet. And then uh, then they came on board full time the next year. So it's been good. And the. It's it's nice how that uh, like you said the the business relationships and people relationships like um, like when you guys did go out west uh, in 2019 not this year obviously but uh, how you guys still use like a, a Canadian tire for a shop and everything um, just um, like I think every interview we've had somebody always talks about I mean it's it's got to be a commonality amongst team owners uh, between you and DJ and LP. Uh, and Mario Goslin, it's having the right people that make like a truly successful race team, regardless of where you are in the hierarchy of a team, like uh, the DGMs of the world. I mean, his people count for a lot because there's so few of them. Uh, I mean, that's a different scale than the Pinty series. But uh, anyway, what I'm getting at is uh, um, it's it's the key to any successful business, and uh, and you're able to make a business of this. Uh, you also have the automotive shop. So do the, do the two overlap, uh, like staff wise or, um, not, not so much, I guess, really. Um, eh? Not, not a lot. The Other than the owner. The automotive <laughs> shop started three years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so we don't, um, we don't, well, our one, uh, Matt, the 18 crew member, he would swap back and forth a bit at the start. And then, then when we got when we were running the three full time teams for two years, he was at the race shop pretty much full time. Mm -hmm. But now since COVID, he's went to the automotive shop. So, so there is you know there is a bit of back and forth there. Um, but you know, I I just I started that three years ago just to you don't know where racing is going to go down the road, right? It's it's right. a lot of work. Mm -hmm. you, you don't know what's going to happen. So um, diversify. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. But like you said, you know, the, the people like the Canadian Tire in Saskatoon, every, they have Canadian Tire that hasn't sponsored me since 2015, but Linda makes a phone call and says, we're coming out west. And he says, there'll be three bays ready for you. And we pull up and we're there for two days. And, you know, it's just great. You, you have a place to work. You, and, and the people, you get to see the same people almost every year that are there. And, and uh, it's all like family. Yeah, I love seeing those posts where you got your cars up on their lifts out in the yeah. out west. Like that's super cool. That's been happening for years. That's yeah. that's a relationship that lasts. And um, I I just wondered if if there was any sort of things as well, like in terms of the the business parts of it. Like, uh, is there anything um, from the racing side 
like parts relationships or even like um like workwear and that sort of thing that like translates from your your Pinty's relationships and that stuff um i would not really i get not really i don't think um no I'm, we you know I'm, you try to use they, try i don't to, know if there was anything that would no you you obviously try to leverage things for sponsorship and stuff like that but it, it it's so mm-hmm. hard because everybody in the automotive world is so they're they're right at their minimum dollars at anyways for pricing and stuff like that but right um it the two really we don't do a lot together really in a sense so i had to ask <laughs> I, I think what makes it help the automotive shop though is yeah. the 22 racing like reputation in in Milverton or in my area. My yeah, name, yeah, there you go. More yeah. my name or because of the racing business or whatever, people mm-hmm. hear that there's an automotive shop there and they go there and and yeah. So uh, I think if I that, lived in Milverton, I would. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. You know, we did the logo, the almost the exact same and stuff like that. So it's just trying to connect the two together a bit, but. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's all good. We uh, we got to see some returns in the series this year. Not not just obviously Jr. and our, our good buddy, a friend of the show, Kenny Fourth, made a, a nice surprise return. But uh, Flamborough made its debut um, in the series. We've also seen we saw the return of Sunset Speedway. What do you think about those two circuits potentially being back on the schedule permanently? I think it'd be great to get them both back on. Um, I, I strongly feel that's what our series needs to get more cars. It, you know, if we could have some more Ontario short tracks, it would it would get more J.R. Fitzpatrick, Jake Sheridan's, um, just them, some of them young guys that mm-hmm. won't buy or build a Pinty's car for one or two races, but if there was maybe four or five, they'd build a car and we there there go your car count. It would you know. That's how I got in, doing just ovals in Ontario. One year do three, the next year do six, the next year do seven of them, and eventually you're full-time. And, and uh, so to go, you know, Flamborough was a great racetrack when, when uh, Loved it. back in 2000, likely between 11 and 15, we tested there so much. With I'd go there and test all the time just to try different things in our car and, and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, I'd love to see Flamborough back on. Sunset's great. Sunset yeah. Speedway is, is uh, another amazing track, so it, it'd be great to get back in the series as well. Yeah, it's uh, it was nice to see um, those types of tracks, and it would be really nice to see that kind of uh, a nice representation of all the Ontario ovals uh, mixed in with a bit of road course. And um, let's assume that 2021 is normal and. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I guess, do you start prepping for 21 like it is business as usual? Um, you just go at, like, you've had a little more time, I guess, uh, due to the longer off season, um, you, you love and rub on the cars a little bit more, uh, but yeah, do you just, you attack and get the fleet going like it business as usual, Scott? Well, it's pretty hard right now to do that we, just because of sponsorship, basically, like because of, right. you know, we don't know, you know, Mark's, Mark's sponsors, we don't know 100%. You know, they definitely want to come back and they want to go racing full time. But, you know, if they can't have fans at the racetrack, um, that's a big part for them. So, yeah, what the outlook is. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's that's a bit up in the air. Same as Alex, you know, they both fully intend to race full series next year, but it's just it's so hard when, when you don't know what's going on. So our road course cars, they're basically ready to race because they were ready at the start of this year. So the old cars, uh, we only raced two of them this year. So there's not, it's not that there's not a lot of work to do, but it's, they have the money to do it, I guess is mm-hmm. the biggest thing. Yeah. I understand that makes total sense. Yeah. You know, I think, I think NASCAR is trying really hard to get a schedule out by the end of the year or, you know, sooner than later. So teams mm-hmm. can at least, prepare for something um right. I, I i 
that's what I'm told anyways. I think they're trying to come up with a plan, you know, just to move forward and hopefully it, it all plays out. It's got to be a nightmare as a boss man, eh? <laughs> <laughs> it is, you know. You just don't know. You don't know what to do. You have, yeah. you know, you have no idea what to do. So I got, I have a couple old cars here I'm putting together for a guy. So um, just trying to, trying to, you know, keep the doors open, basically. Right. That's all we can can really hope for. And and you know, one of the things that I think Graydon and I have really wanted to push with this this whole show and. Um, you know, I work on fictionals on, on, you know, post them up on Twitter. It's trying to get that corporate attention to the, the little series. You know, I think you, your team has been very successful and in, in having guys that have some, some major sponsorship, obviously Alex with, uh, EpiPen now I switched to Viagra with, uh, Lowe's and switched to Rona, mm-hmm. obviously with the GM Paye guys, uh, with party casino, you know, I think, you know, people hear the word NASCAR and they think huge, big budgets like they have down south. Um, It's still a big budget up here. But um, what is the situation when it comes to going week to week to to the racetrack? Is it, you know, we've got to get the entire team out there by Thursday or we've got to get somebody to drive the cars down. We got to get somebody here. We got to get somebody there, um, because not everybody is a, a hired employee. Yeah, you know when the last two years we when we ran the three full time teams, it, it was pretty hectic to get to get everything organized. But I feel our team we came up with a pretty good system the way we did it all. You know, and it also helped. It was always say CTMP always had two races. Like the schedule was always pretty comparable, so all the all the crew guys almost knew, you know, they needed if they needed to get Friday off for work three times, uh, they had to get the uh, four days off for out west. So we had a pretty good setup. Um, you know, we'd take basically like the three vehicles from from Milverton, and and one would stop in the Barry area, one would stop in the you know uh, Toronto area, and and everybody would just kind of end up at the motel the night before the race together. <laughs> you know, some guys would get there at six o'clock, some guys would get there at two in the morning, but uh it all worked out. It you know, it's pretty it it's a bit of a challenge logistically to do it all with that many people, but uh I feel we had it down path pretty good. You have also kind of a nice little business model in a typical year. Um uh I guess it's also sort of a, a a mutually beneficial thing having uh, the likes of Christopher Bell and Kaz Grala and Chandler Smith uh, um, running your equipment. Uh, it it kind of maybe gives you a bit of feedback from those type of guys. I guess, as you said, though, I mean, everybody has their own driving style, so that's maybe not something you can necessarily paint with a setup. But what's it like having those kind of guys running your stuff? It's just cool. You know, like it's it's – Something that down the road you can say he drove one of my cars. Yeah. Um, it, 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 you know, Christopher Bell, he come to our shop one day and I don't know, he looked like he was like 15 years old or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We ordered lunch and, and I'm, he got, uh, I think he got French fries and uh, he was, he was sitting up there with all, all of us eating lunch and he had a little package of ketchup. And he'd tear it open and he'd put a strip of ketchup on top of each french fry. That's, <laughs> that's like a full basket of french fries. So, you know, someday if he ever wins a cup championship, it'd be pretty cool to have stories to, to say like that about him. But uh, it, it's neat. Like you said, the feedback isn't, you, we don't get, sure you get feedback that day. Um, yeah. I don't know if it necessarily helps a team that much, but it, you know, it's better than none. That's for sure. But it's just, mm-hmm. it's cool to have guys like that around because they're, they're just, most of them are just down to earth guys, you know, like no big deal. Just sit in the floor and wait for us to finish mounting the seat and just yeah. hang out. Well, I mean, like, thanks to you and Linda over the years, like we were able to meet those guys and they are like super cool guys. I mean, that, um, how good they were with Owen and Riley and, and 
I, I mean, that's a that's something that we almost take for granted now with the Pinty's garage because all you guys are so great with them. But uh, seeing like those. I mean, they weren't as big as they are now, but I mean, they're big to us seeing Christopher Powell and, and Kaz Grawl and, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, that's that, like my boys never, ever forget that. Yeah, no, it, that, and that's great that, you know, that makes memories. Yeah. So how we want to ask a kind of how that, how does that happen? How do those guys get into contact with you? With you? Was it through NASCAR? Was it Kyle Busch? Who was it? Joe Gibbs? Who, who was Who's the guy that's coming out and making the deals? Because um, it's not unheard of. We've seen that continue actually with DJ as well. Uh, I think he's had Noah Gregson and Riley Herbst drive for him. So um, I would love to know how that kind of happened. Um, well, it was it was TRD that called me the first time for Christopher Bell, but that was through um, Rudy Fugel told uh, it was Zach Irving from TRD, but uh, Rudy told him that Christopher needed to go practice at CTMP. And there's a Pinty's race coming up or whatever. So I think it was uh, like Monday or Tuesday night at like 10 o'clock or 10.30 at night. I get this call from Te- or California. And it was Jack Irving from TRD. He, I think he's a, I don't know, vice president or he's pretty high up <laughs> he's there. He's up there. Yeah, he's Anyways, up there. He, you know, he asked about doing this race if I'd have a car. And I said, yeah. And he said, okay, it's a done deal. So that's how that <laughs> one turned out. And then, it just, then I think the following year, Jack called me to do a car for Harrison Burton. But yeah. then there was, uh, and we were going to do that, but then there was a conflict that it, it fell through. But uh, That would have been And cool. then the next Toyota guy was uh, Chandler. Chandler Smith. Yeah. 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 yeah, you've had had plenty of names in there. I think Kaz Grala drove for you guys. Yeah, as well. yeah. 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 Jeb Burton. Jeb Burton yeah. did. James yeah. Burton. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Um, uh, this year we were going to have... Uh, uh, he drives 18 truck now. Akis? Akis. Yeah. 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 Oh, damn. Yeah. He was going Ooh. to. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 awesome. I I love hearing stories like that because I think Grady and I, you know, we we talk about it quite often that those names, you know, maybe they're not Canadian, but they bring eyes to the series, um, you know, and and it's it's yeah. crazy because everybody, I think everybody and their mother expects these drivers are going to come up here and just dominate, and they they struggle. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I said earlier, it's a tough series. You you know. Andrew Ranger, LP Doomlin, DJ Kennington, like them got Tagliani, Mark. Every, we are only get, not maybe getting that many cars, but the cars that are there are very, very, very good cars. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Quality over quality, hundred yeah. yeah. percent. Or yeah. Quality yeah. over quantity, hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, and these cars aren't are are not born of NASCAR. I mean, they're they're a, a a series that NASCAR acquired. So, I mean, they're, they're really nothing like the, what any of these guys have driven before particularly. Right. So, um, they can come up here with, uh, maybe a bit of swagger and confidence, but it might, uh, give them a little piece of humble pie when they jump in and try and turn some laps in them. Because I, I, I mean, I've never driven one either, but I mean, they look, they look squirrely, the tires and everything. Yeah, I mean, it you guys got to know what you're both. doing in those things. Yeah, like Chandler, right? Chandler always rates a super late model, or a few, you know, a bunch of them super late models, so they're completely different than a super late model. Yeah. Um, but then uh, Christopher, I guess he drove dirt cars and stuff, but they're definitely, they're their own, you know, there's nothing really else like them. You know, they, they're top heavy, they roll a lot, they don't have good brakes, they don't have good shocks. Um, Sounds great. My son yeah. goes to Flambro in a late mall and goes faster than we can go in a Pinty's car, but but uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's just the way it is. And they're like Jr. said, these cars, like he said, I almost forgot how hard these cars were to drive. Like mm-hmm. cause the late malls, they not that they drive good, but they just they have way less horsepower, they have more downforce, they have better shocks, better brakes. So you know, Jr. admitted he said he he forgot how hard they were to car- drive. I think that's the beauty of the discipline, though. Like, it's it doesn't matter how good they drive relative to another another car. They're their own beast, and you guys have to be a master of your craft to make them go around the track super fast and and to watch 
the best of the best do it just shows how good you got to be because um, from the sound of it, it's not a, a something that you can be a really fast study at particular, unless you're Raphael Lassard or something like that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, it definitely takes some time to get them figured out. And, and like I said, to figure out what you need to do a 200 or 250 lap race. Right. One of the announcements that you guys had kind of in the, was leading up to this season that I think Graydon <laughs> again we got to go back to all of our conversations where we're we're talking about the penny series we're just lucky to be able to chat with 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 you guys now and one of the things that we talked about was oh my gosh Stuart Friesen oh, yeah. for 22 racing at Oshwaken Speedway first time and then this happens so hopefully next year Hopefully, we'll get to see that. What are your thoughts on Oshwaken? And would we ever see Scott Steckley go back in to drive? Maybe a one-off. Maybe a one-off. No, I don't. I don't think I'll be back. You know, I just it's it takes too much to do to run run the team and try to focus on driving. You know, it, it, it's very hard. But the Stuart Friesen thing. Um, that's very, very cool. And we were, definitely were going to use that to try to make our car better. Because, we, you know, the deal we made with him, he was going to come testing with us at least twice to give us all the feedback so we knew what to do to the other cars. Um, so that was that was part of the deal we had made with him. And, and uh, we were definitely looking forward to it. Alex and Mark had both raced an ice before. So, you know, they we thought... They race a nice, they could they'll race in dirt. <laughs> and if we get Stuart to help us with the car set up, that, you know, things would be good. But um, it was going to, you know, it would have been quite the show if we would have got to go there because they would have packed that place, that's for sure. Which, I think it was going to be $25,000 to win. So. Yeah, it was a big purse, yeah. eh? Yeah. Let's hope that still happens for next year. They still got my money. I want my seats. Yeah, me too. <laughs> first row, first row, we're seeing that. Uh, absolutely uh, exciting. So you said, you know, it's too much, but what happens if, say, uh, your son is in a top-tier ride? We're not going to see a Kyle versus Scott uh, race. <laughs> I want to see who's who's better. I doubt it, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we, we've obviously, we've talked quite a bit about the Pinty series, the, the stuff that didn't happen, obviously, unfortunately, this year. What what is the outlook that you find for the series right now? Obviously, things are you know they're a little tough at the moment, but the competition is there. You know, we're trying to spread the word about the series. It seems like you know with at what Alex is doing, what Raphael is doing, it, people are starting to notice it. Do you do you see some sort of a, a rise at least in the public with the series? Well, I think twenty twenty was going to be a good good for the series. You know, they had. NASCAR, you know, they raised the purses a bunch for us, and they they yeah. they did a lot of stuff to to prepare for 2020 to make it mm -hmm. to make it better. And uh, I strongly believe it was going to be better. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the direction they're going now that they're still trying to go in that same direction next year. I think I I strongly think it is going to get better. That just we need time to make it make it happen. We need you know we need to get rid of the pandemic right now that's going on and I, I strongly believe it's going to get better and they've done a lot of stuff to cut costs for 2020 um uh, they just seem to be more involved with the team owners than they were in the past trying to get more you know ideas and things to do to make the series better and and uh with social media i think most or a lot of teams are trying to get more involved in social media to get the series out there like you guys are doing and and uh all we can do is hope it, you know, hope it goes and gets better. Not that it's bad. The racing is great. Nope. Or, the you racing know, everything's great. good. We just need a few more cars and try to get it known a bit better. I think the racing, I mean, that's that really is what sells the series because mm -hmm. it is such fierce and competitive racing. It, um, but as you said, I mean, it's the the business side is so reflective of of world or, or national economic trends that uh, it's going to be kind of a, uh, I felt like we were, 
at the end of 2019, the series was on such a high, like it yeah. was climbing back and it was doing so good. And like you said, they were doing things to make 2020 even yeah. better to build on 19. And then this kind of stalled it out. So this is kind of where I feel like I felt like as a fan, this forum that we have sort of is sort of bridging that gap a little bit and we're trying to keep this buzz going because i feel like if if 21 can be even somewhat normal it will be uh a, a, we're going to be sort of backstepped a little bit but start that but upward trend again start pulling up again yes i, I totally agree with you and what you are doing is great hope you know just keeping the series name out there any way you can and that's yeah. what we're, all us team owners trying to do just keep talk about the series and you know keep it in the buzz, I guess, or whatever. And, and hopefully if things start getting back to normal, it can go back in the uphill again. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's the, you know, that's obviously our, our, I think our goal here, you know, we want to get um, corporate Canada, corporate America, whoever it is, you know, companies to come on because the racing's phenomenal. You know, the, the personalities are phenomenal. Yeah. But curious, um, Scott, we haven't really touched on, what you follow in terms of racing, how you, who is your first, uh, you know, the driver that you go, you went for, was it Jeff Gordon? Was it Dale Earnhardt? You know, who was it? Um, I like, I like Jeff Gordon, I guess, uh, you know, not a crazy, crazy big Jeff Gordon fan, but I feared for him. Um, uh, Martin Truex, you know, the last say seven, eight years, I've, I've feared for him quite a bit. Got to be a big fan of his and got to meet him with through Cole. But um, I like watching truck races. I like watching cup races. Um, normally go to at least one cup race a year, normally to Martinsville. Nice. Uh, last year we went to Phoenix. We were supposed to be in Phoenix last weekend. Oh. We still we have 10 tickets for next year now. So, um, but yeah, you know, I like watching. We'll go on Sunday afternoons. <laughs> right, Graydon? We'll, we'll go to Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. Martinsville, you know, Martinsville is one of my favorite tracks to go to in the U.S. So. If, it, if it came down to taking a... I asked Kyle this earlier. I, I think it'd be curious, actually, to hear what your, your answer is. If you got a chance for to, to drive one of those cup races, which track is it going to be? Would it be Martinsville? Yeah, it'd be Martinsville, definitely. Yeah? yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. I know when, when I the Pinty series was... Uh, when Pinty series was talking about going to Loudon, I kept I was pushing them to go to Martinsville. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. The the yeah Loudon was was it was what it was, but um, you know obviously we want to I want to give you an opportunity um, to to thank your sponsors. You know something that we really want to do on this show is allow some of those companies to get that you know, that airtime that they so desperately deserve, you know, they, they've kept the series of full for so many years and, and continually help out these race teams. So I'll give you a, we'll give you a couple minutes to, to talk about those sponsors. Well, I, there's a lot of them. I don't know if I can list them all. Off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just see, Kyle, Kyle was able to get his, so <laughs> the last years, a lot of, you know, great product sponsors, but, uh, you know, AW Mill Rates and Herb Transport, they've been with me forever. Um, Castor Oil, they're a supporter of the last few years. Will Ride Transport. Um, you know, the list just goes on and on. Auto Glim, Mechanics Wear. Um, have to look out in the shop, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, There's just uh, so many of them. Party Casino, you know, came on board this year. Obviously, GM Pie, mm-hmm. Viagra, Rona. Um, Just so many, so many big companies out there that help us out. Wendell, Wendell Motors has always helped us. Yeah. All we could say is that any sponsor that sponsors the 22 Racing Team, you know, we're we're a fan of. We thank them for everything that they've done. And those those cars, they just look so beautiful out on the racetrack and they very you know what's very nice about them is that i don't really we don't really see them wreck you know there's not the talladegas where you're writing off a complete you know the entire thing is done right yeah um that's what's really nice about this and that i hope it does help out the, the budget a little bit but um you know 
one last thing. Kyle's racing. Is that is that 22 car going to be uh, that seat available for him if he wants it? One other sponsor was uh, Quick Wick. Fire there we go. Who is sponsor? Yes. Hey, on board last year with Chandler Smith. And, uh, I'll put it up there again. <laughs> uh, he's a great guy. And, you know, it's a great product. So, you know, this is the time of year people with wood stoves, they work amazing yes. with wood stoves. So everybody get out and buy their Quick Wick fire starter. I never light fires the old school way ever again. I use them all the time. I know. They're amazing. <laughs> My dad yeah. has a stove and he uses them every day to light it. So, But as far as Kyle, you know, he's the last few years he's done really, really well. Um, he wants to move up a class and, and I'm leery to let him and we do. And I think, you know, it's going to take him a couple of years till he's running really good in it. And, you know, Two weeks in, he's running right up front. So uh, we did that with the mini stock, and I thought for sure it'd be you know a couple of years till he can win races, and he was winning them the first year, and and uh, so he's doing really well. We're gonna race late mall this this coming year, I believe, at Flambro and maybe the odd APC race or something. But oh, awesome. we'll see what happens. He's uh, he works hard. He works in the car a lot, and and. Uh, you know, he, he shows a lot of interest in it and uh, is, uh, helps with the setup all the time. So we'll see what happens. Sounds like you got uh, a pretty good game plan that way, going uh, um, not too aggressively with uh, moving them up and, and letting them get familiar with the disciplines. And um, that's good to see. I mean, it's not a lot of t- like a ton of pressure on him other than what he puts on himself, I yeah. guess. But yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's great. Proud so dad are, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> we are at the the end of our interview, sadly, uh, with Scott Steckley. This was an absolute blast. I watched, uh, you know, Scott when I was uh, <clears throat> a lot smaller uh, out on the grid. I was terrified to meet him for the very first time. Um, I don't know why, but you were just as <laughs> awesome back then as you are now. Uh, great and I'm going to let you uh, do our thank yous to Mr. Scott Steckley. I know that it means a lot to have him on the, the podcast for you. Well, like you said, Cam, uh, I remember uh, when we actually first went up and met Scott uh, at sunset that uh, um, my kids, it was the same thing. They, it might as well have been uh, Dale Jr. or Jeff Gordon standing there because the, they, they watched your car go around in circles for for years on TV before we actually came to the races. So uh, thank you very much for doing this uh, with us, uh, with them. Uh, we all really appreciate it, Scott. So uh, thanks very much for, for coming on. No problem at all. Anytime you guys want, I'll, I'll uh, gladly do it. And if awesome. when you get up this way, Graydon, uh, stop in if you're getting up for a trailer or whatever, remember? Yeah, it's... Uh, it's getting uh, pushed back to December now, so I'll keep you in the loop about that. Okay, sounds good. <laughs> we'll do the, the back way home. Yeah. We want to thank Scott Steckley for joining us on Fanside, racecanada.world, racecanada.ca. You can find all of our shows, including this interview with Scott and with Kyle Steckley, on podcast, our podcast on Spotify, Podbean, and of course on YouTube, but also go to the website, racecanada.world. You can find everything on there, links on there. Also our Facebook page, don't forget to join that. Uh, everybody, thank you all for tuning in. We will catch you on our next episode of Race Canada Fanside.